Hello friends, welcome back to the Parsonage. I'm Pastor Don from First United Methodist Church of Brazoria and it's time for today's Stay at Home Daily Devotional. I love the music, well the lyrics and poetry and I'm deeply inspired by the incredible story of the so-called Methodist Saint Fanny Crosby. Hopefully you'll have or have had the privilege of seeing Navarro College's Dr. Shelley O'Neill's beautiful one-woman show about her life. We were blessed to have Dr. O'Neill perform it in our sanctuary just a few years ago. I mention Fanny Crosby because of one of her best loved hymns, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, found on page 351 in our hymnal. Verse 1 in the chorus go, Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I wonder if you have any idea about what scripture this was likely based upon. I'll let you in on it. In Mark's Gospel, Mark being my favorite Gospel, there's an interesting passage following our Lord's first feeding of the multitudes. He does that twice, incidentally, but it goes like this, quote, Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were, that they were straining at the oars against the adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out, for they saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And the scriptures tell us they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened." Unquote. Did you catch the short sentence in verse 48? The disciples were in a small open boat, foundering against strong winds and rough seas when Jesus walks by on the water. Mark tells us, quote, he intended to pass them by, unquote. Now that doesn't sound like Jesus now, does it? Fanny Crosby's lyrics refer to this short sentence. In that way, it's not a soft little sweet innocuous song. It's a distress call, a, an SOS from the terrified disciples to Jesus. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. And Jesus didn't pass them by, got into the boat and calmed the storm. But it makes me wonder why why Jesus intended to walk past them, apparently leaving them to struggle against the wind and waves. Seemingly he had something more important to do. What's going on here? I tell you, I think the whole point has to do with a, an important underlying theme in Mark's Gospel. Durable discipleship. Friends, by this point in the Gospel, the disciples had already witnessed Jesus' miraculous abilities, but they struggled to understand who He was, even though He told them. I mean, this was the second storm on Galilee He'd calmed. He'd just fed more than 20,000 people with a couple of fish sandwiches. He had healed many in both Jewish and Gentile areas. He'd traveled. He'd taught them about God and the kingdom. He'd even sent them out to minister two by two with minimal provisioning so they would have to depend upon God. And yet, they still didn't understand. Simply put, my friends, they weren't growing in discipleship. Or as Mark tells us, quote, their hearts were hardened. Contrast this with the blind beggar Bartimaeus who, once cured, immediately followed Jesus on the way. No one 
could deter Bartimaeus. He was focused on Jesus. The twelve, on the other hand, always seemed to well, misunderstand or miss the point. No movement, no great, no growth. In that way, the blind beggar was actually more of a disciple than the twelve. No, my friends, I think this short sentence described a sort of faith test for the disciples. Would they, would they remain confident of God's love and protection or panic at the first sign of adversity? Remember, just a few hours earlier, they couldn't figure out how to feed a multitude. And again, this was the second storm on Galilee they'd panicked over with Jesus. God, friends, wants us to grow as disciples. My late mother saw an interesting pattern in the, in, of, of, of ongoing spiritual growth throughout both testaments that mirrored the expected growth in maturity of children as they aged. She spoke of the very tight and confining rules given a young child. Don't cross the street. Don't talk to strangers. Well, both are, are sensible and prudent for their age and maturity. However, such rules must grow and transform in keeping with the person's growing maturity. Those prudent and sensible rules for a kindergartner would likely be very problematic for an adult. The disciples weren't maturing as Jesus would like. How about us? Do we remain confident of God's love and protection or do we panic at the first sign of difficulty or adversity? It's reassuring to know that we can cry out in distress or fear and ask God for help in times of difficulty or danger. God is always there and well, God will meet us where we are. But like the twelve, we're supposed to be growing in our faith and strengthening our discipleship durability. For the world is a troubled place and people need to hear the good news of a God who cares intimately for his people to the point of giving his son for our salvation. But the world needs us to grow so that we might help grow others and so on. Let's pray that while our Lord didn't pass us by, we won't let it happen to anyone else. Grace, peace, and good health always, and have a blessed day.